Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're breaking down Zoom stock. We're going to go over the website, CEO, business, and books, and everything else in between. And then at the end of this video, we're going to give this a rating to see if it's even worth a buy. So stick around and let's jump right into this, guys. <laughs> Welcome back, my passive income investors. I like to another exciting breakdown from an outsider looking in. I've never owned this company. I've never looked into it. So you can tell my opinion's going to be biased. And then we're going to rate it at the end of this video. And this company trades at the ticker symbol ZM on the NASDAQ. And it's been a bit of a volatile ride since this IPO. This company currently trades at a crazy market valuation for something that is very similar to Skype. If you've never heard of this company before, well, let's just get right into it starting with the website. Now, I always like looking over the website because it gives me a good feel about how this company operates. Is it clean, professional? Uh, if you want to see a bad review on a website, go look at GameStock and you can see the reflection to its stock. This The website stuff is really important to a professional um, IPO company or a company that is publicly traded. So first of all, what the heck is Zoom? Well, essentially, it is exactly like Skype. It's just mildly different. I think, don't quote me on that. Uh, we're gonna scroll through this and take a quick peek. Zoom is a supernatural and easy to use. Just download it, click, and you're in. I use Zoom um, on an airplane, in the car, in my house, in an office, everywhere. So I actually downloaded the Zoom app, but I can't just bring it up anymore because you actually have to link up with other people to create a meeting. So if I were to say join meeting, it costs nothing to download. Um, you're gonna have to get like this meeting ID where you're gonna link up with people. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna get too much into that because I can't really play with it because I have no one to link up with. But just going over the website, guys, I do like it. Pretty straightforward, pretty professional. They put a lot on here for the simplicity of the company, and I want to look at their pricing real quick. Uh, very simple pricing structure. It's nothing like um, Shopify or anything like that, uh, because essentially they're trying to collude you into basically being able to link up with more people for a longer period of time. If you do want one of these uh, paid monthly uh, versions of this download uh, called Zoom. Uh, so the host um, for the free version anyways, how do I get rid of that? Why did that pop up? So the host for the free version, we've got up to 100 participants, unlimited one-to-one -one meetings, 40 minutes uh, limit on group meetings. So if you want to do a big group meeting with the free version, well, you're not going to get a whole lot of time because 40 minutes is not that long. But then when you get into like the $20 a month trial thing going on here, we get meeting duration is 24 hours. So if you wanted to do a long meeting or daily meetings, uh, you can get away with that. And this is where you're starting to get into uh, some of the actual file recording, which I think you could just screen cap anyways. So this is where they're trying to push in these little extra things that you could pretty much do with just other software. So I find it fascinating that this company, for how new it's been trading anyways, compared to something like a Skype or like a Facebook chat, uh, that it's doing as well as it's doing. Now, this offers a little bit more variety than Skype and those kind of companies do. But at the same time, I just don't think it's that much more. So like in the disruptive aspect of things, I'm surprised this is exploding. And we're going to figure out where it's exploding in its books and why it's doing so bloody well. Um, we're going to go over that in a sec. But overall, the website, guys, really, really like the website. Very professional, very clean. Um, we can go in here and we can see kind of like the partners that they've had. And this is a really fascinating part of the website because I think this is where the growth has mainly been coming from. Any company that does well offers some form of an affiliate marketing. And this one is no different. Uh, so what I want to show you here is become a technology partner. So you can apply now and the technology uh, program, partner program, creates a broad ecosystem of products that are certified to work with Zoom, giving customers more choice and providing new avenues to showcase your products. Um, so this is kind of interesting because they have like a refer a friend program here where you can actually basically earn cash and gift cards. I'm not going to do that as an affiliate link because I've never used this. And honestly, I don't want to start charging you guys for something you can pretty much get for free anyways. I don't think any of you are doing 100 people board meetings for 24 hours. But if you are, link in the description below. I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyways, reseller referral. Like they have so many referral programs and partnership programs. And you can see all the big companies that are working with them. I think this is where their bread and butter comes from because it kind of reminds me of like NordVPN. Any of these companies that offer actual like affiliates that anybody can get involved with tend to get a little bit more um, faster traction, which we're going to see as we jump into the investor relation. But before we do, let's get a little personal one-on-one. -on -one. Let's hear from the CEO himself, a video that wasn't really watched um, on Jim Cramer. So we're just going to watch the, the tiny part of this that I like the most. It's not the most interesting interview, but let's just listen. Now, you're, you had 96% year-over-year growth. I mean, these numbers, 
I, I, you know, people are going to be saying today, well, the stock's getting hit. It's not because you're slowing down. It's just because of the way the stock market works, right? I mean, there's not some sudden slowdown. People ask me, Jim, Zoom must have just, something must have gone wrong at Zoom. That's not the way it works, correct? I think so. And, uh, you know, I know how to build a product. I know how to manage a business. I have no idea about a stock price. I think in the long run, I think as long as we keep delivering happiness to our customers, I think a stock price will follow. Again, we look at a long-term shareholder value. All right. I'm glad you mentioned that word because it's the, there's a particular word you mentioned I usually don't think of when it comes to telecommunications. You use the word happiness. You, throughout your documents and your conference call, you talk about happiness. I, I usually talk about money. What does happiness have to do with money? So the purpose of life is about happiness, right? How to make sure your happiness is sustainable? We think to make others happy, your happiness will be sustainable. We build a business to deliver happiness to our customers. Then all of us at Zoom, we feel very happy if we keep doing that. So I really like this part of this interview, guys, because it, it's so uh, nice to hear people saying that. Because like when I think back to like the last recent drama between like CEOs was like Canopy Growth Corp and Constellation, and like the happiness of making proper products and making affordable products was completely out of the the books for them. To them, it was just we got to make money. Fire Bruce Linton. Forget this. Let's, let's funnel the crap out of this. I like the fact that these guys are you know actually focused on that that core fundamental of every business, which is providing a service that brings happiness, convenience to other people. Um, I like the fact that he's thought like that. And it's also interesting that their books are going down, even though their revenues are going up. And they don't talk about it too, too much in here. Maybe we'll watch a little bit more. Let's just listen to a little more. Okay, so uh, how do you make Morgan Stanley happy? We, first of all, Morgan Stanley is our customer already, right? And uh, we build a much better service. We help Morgan Stanley to improve the employee engagement. With that, you know, the company culture is getting better. That's why they become a happy uh, uh, customer. And, uh, you know, after a while, Morgan Stanley will see the huge value after they deploy the Zoom. And this is a way for us to deliver happiness to our customers like Morgan Stanley. All right. So what is the best way to, to measure if you're a retail investor? Do we look at your rapid revenue growth? Because your actual contract st strategy makes it a little bit harder for me to analyze it by deferred revenue or billings. What's my metric here? I think you should look at our CAM based on IDC. By 2022, it's a $43 billion market. Look at our revenue today. As long as we keep working harder and make sure our customer happy, I think a long-term value, I think it should be okay. So I don't like CEOs when they start talking about like the full market value by like 2023, whatever it is, because I don't like the speculative aspects of it. And I don't like the fact that he's just like, oh, well, it'll be okay. We, it's a big market cap. We keep making people, we'll be okay. I don't, I don't like that sentiment. I like the fact that they actually look at their growth aspects like Tesla, you know, Tesla has a lot of outlooking growth um, avenues for them. Whereas this company, they're basically like a one trick pony. That's it. They just do streaming service. They say they do it better than everybody else. And if they can sustain that they'll be fine but it makes room for disruptiveness and other companies to come in and maybe replicate what they've done here or even start competing on another scale with again facebook chat with um, instagram or not instagram facebook also owns whatsapp whatsapp's another uh, chat that it's limited but at the same time you can do similar stuff so i don't get the proprietary aspects of this product but who cares let's see how good the books are doing maybe i'm wrong um so before we go over their actual um, annual report and their projections here. I want to just take a quick look at their base fundamentals on something like a Yahoo Finance, something you can compare it to. And if we scroll down, we can take a quick peek. I always like looking at the financial charts here. Uh, maybe we'll scroll down so you can see that so my face ain't blocking it. Uh, but we can see, guys, that the revenues are actually exploding here as the overall revenues are, are going up at a crazy fast pace from 2017. I mean, we went from 60.82 uh, million to uh, currently 2019, we're looking at a revenue of 30, $330 million with an earnings of 7.58. So the revenue Revenues are completely down, so that means this company is probably growing, expanding, spending a lot of capital, trying to keep things up and running here. Uh, with a market cap, though, of $20 billion. $20 billion. Does that match the revenue? Well, with a revenue of $330 million, I mean, I could see this company having a $20 billion market cap, but the fact that the revenues are so beaten into the ground, there better be good reason for that, because if they can't get those bottom line earnings up with those revenues, the company's just not going to do that well in the long term. I guarantee you that. So let's take a look at the financials within here, and then we're going to go into the presentation in and of itself. So first of all, uh, we can see total revenues have obviously been increasing hugely 
um, over time, which is absolutely incredible, uh, incredible growth factors there. So hopefully they, they the market keeps going up and they're able to keep expanding. Uh, but what we want to look at specifically is within the balance sheet in and of itself. So in the balance sheet here, if we scroll through, the first thing that I'm always going to go to that I recommend you go to is seeing is does this company have any form of profitability to match their market cap? And what I mean by that is let's take a look at the total current assets and then versus the total liability. So total assets. We have 354 million, and this is in the millions, correct? No, in the thousands. So yeah, if it's in the thousands, it starts. If you guys are new to this, the first line would be in the thousands, and then the next bump would be in the millions. So we have 354 million in assets versus a total liabilities of 187 million. So if we minus 187 versus 350, we're going to end up with about you know a couple hundred million bucks, which isn't absolutely terrible. It's pretty good, just under a couple hundred million. Um, so uh, it's. I'm, why did I say that was good? That's not that great compared to a $20 billion market cap. When I'm buying companies, I like seeing what their base value is. So they sold off all their assets today, you know, the real estate, the employees, whatever they had, cash in the bank. They sold everything off today. They would basically be left with just under a couple hundred million bucks uh, based on their total assets, which if I'm paying, you know, a $20 billion market cap for, I mean, it better it better have more assets underlying than that. So this company needs a lot to prove what its current valuation is already. I can tell you that much, which is quite terrifying in and of itself. So when you're looking at these companies, guys, when you go into the books, pay attention to that as well, because that way you can compare it to the market cap and you can see for those base asset values, how much more am I paying for it aside from the income, aside from the cash flows, how much more am I paying for it versus its underlying assets? So if we go back in here, guys, like I said, the revenue is growing incredibly. If they can keep the revenue growth rate up, which doesn't look like it's doing that well into 2019, considering uh, in 2018, we did 151. Well, it's, it's still doubling, but I mean, can they continue that? I mean, it's hard to go from 150 to three, and then to go from three to six in the next year will be the big question. But if that ever starts slowing down, this company is turning in the complete other direction. So let's see uh, what kind of growth factors we have here. And let's take a look at their overall presentation with their annual meeting here. So let's just take a quick peek, growing through it with the growth strategy. What is your growth strategy? It all starts with delivering happiness to our customers. It's not a growth strategy, people. It's a product strategy. If your product has that, the growth strategy is actually figuring out how to get it to the customers and the best way to do it. So 70 plus um, net promoter score. So I don't know what the 70 plus means, net promoter. 95 CSAT score. I'm not sure what that is. 85% increased video usage upon switching to Zoom and an $80 billion annual meeting minute run rate. Um, not, that's pretty crazy. So, I mean, we're just looking at the base numbers. But if you're comparing this to something like a Facebook, I mean, it's kind of a joke, really. A unique financial profile. Yes, because your revenues have been increasing substantially. I get it. You're still in a growth straight. Enormous opportunity. Debatable. Uh, considering countries in the world, uh, we're going to actually see where their top countries are in a sec here. So Zoom growth strategy, up market international. So they're just trying to expand. Clearly, the expansion is where most of their focus is right now, which scares me a little bit. I like seeing it expanding in individual countries. And then you see what like one country's growth rate is for this kind of a company, which we're going to try and take a look at in a second. Up market opportunity. Don't like hearing that. International expansion. Here we go. Uh, this is where things are fascinating because this company makes the majority of its money in the United Kingdom. As we can see, the top 10 international market by revenue, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, Japan, Germany, um, France, Mexico, China, New Zealand, and India. So, I mean, the U.S. isn't even a factor in this. And I think that is due to the fact that people in the U.S. probably use Skype and Facebook more than they use anything else. They probably use WhatsApp. I mean, even in Canada here, we use WhatsApp a lot. And if you were to compare these numbers to over there, it'd be neat to see like the countries that are dominating the revenue for Facebook because it does not look like this. So I think it's neat uh, to see that the United Kingdom, they're a very big European country, clearly, and they're mainly focusing on the other side of the world from the Western world here, clearly. But it's kind of neat that Canada makes the top two. Kind of fascinating because I live in Canada, so I mean, it's I've never even heard of anybody really using Zoom. Um, but upselling the platform, uh, Zoom for phones, so this probably has to do with their partner program of getting people to promote it. Because, I mean, if you get one guy into it and he owns a big company, well, he's going to get everyone in that company into it so they can do their meetings. So, I mean, that's where the benefit probably comes with this company overall. Um, but in here, I don't know if they're going to show us many of the books. Zoom, phone, innovation, velocity, velocity, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so shared line appearance, shared line groups. Um, there's nothing really fascinating that's just like jaw dropping here at all. It's just, here's the basic product. Here's how we're trying to grow it. Here's the countries where it's doing the best. Um, so let's see if we can find some books in here or something that's going to actually be useful to us. So let's keep scrolling down. Here we go. Um, so here we got operating income. So total revenues, 
Um, for forward looking, 2019 is going to be about 134 for the first H, first H FY20. So it looks like they're planning on doubling the total revenue as well by uh, basically 2020 here. Um, that's still a bigly debatable. Uh, we got cash flows down here. You guys can check that out. Uh, so overall, I mean, it's it's an interesting company and it definitely has its risk. So what I think we're going to do at this point, guys, is we're going to head back up to my rating board. We're going to give this stock a rating overall. So after that quick glance, let's take a look, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give this a score out of 50 to see if this company's worth buying and my own personal opinion on it, which I'm going to give you at the end of this. But based on the business in and of itself, the business is clean. Uh, the business model is easy to understand. It's basically like a Skype like viewing app and it utilizes basically uh, private parties to do affiliate marketing to help grow it and it seems to be growing at a healthy rate so overall the business in and of itself it's clean it looks professional and it's easy to understand giving me a total i'm going to give it probably about a seven it's not jaw-droppingly crazy but it's very simple very basic i like the look of the company in and of itself so the books the books are growing but the question is can they sustain that growth revenue but overall because their market cap sits so much higher at that 20 billion dollar that 19 plus billion dollar market cap versus those really dinky revenues in the low millions guys we're not talking huge revenues yet so if they can't get those revenues up um, they're not going to be able to achieve the market cap they have and their future growth is just going to decline with it so i mean overall the books uh, not the best books I've ever seen. I'm going to give this a four. This thing has a lot to prove before it's going to be worth what it, you're currently paying for it. So I'm going to give it under a five just to keep it somewhat, you know, eh, eh, it's not great. It's not bad. I like the CEO. Um, the CEO overall, I wish he talked more about the fundamentals of growing the company, but I mean, how much more can he talk about doing affiliate marketing and essentially just getting people on the platform in and of itself? But the CEO, I like his core focus. Um, I'm going to give him a, probably about a seven rating. Uh, sorry, my marker's dying here, but I'll give him a seven for competition and disruptiveness. Is it? I mean, is it really? Like, there's a lot of competition out there they're competing with, guys. It isn't something that is proprietary. I've never used the service. Is it better than other services? I don't personally know. Um, but for competition-wise, guys, this one was only going to get a two because it's just there's so much other people doing something very similar to them out there. And they're trying to do it through, like, a cloud-based service. I just don't like it for that reason. I don't like when there's a lot of other competitors they're dealing with because sooner or later they're going to cap out. And a lot of people, I think, would rather use Facebook or Skype. Just my personal opinion because, like I said, I've never used this. Uh, so the overall outlook for the company, uh, the outlook for the company, guys, I'm going to say, I'm going to give it, a, it's like a 50-50 right now. So I'm going to give it a five because they have the revenues that are growing the way they're growing. If they can keep that revenue up and they can keep the, the pace that they have, I think they're going to do pretty good overall for their outlook in the next five to 10 years. But in the short term, man, if that outlook changes, if that revenue doesn't keep doubling year over year, which I really think we're going to start seeing a slowdown because once you start going from like three to say 150 million to 300 million, it gets a lot harder to go from 300 million to 600 million and from 600 million to say 1.2 billion. So, I mean, we're might more than likely start seeing a slowdown with this company in the near future. And if that happens, it's going to really ding the stock. So they really have to keep that outlook up, giving us a total score. If we add all of this together, so we're all rating for this company, guys. Well, it's not the best rating I've ever given to the company because we're going to give this a rating of 25 out of 50 uh, for my own personal score. Uh, I will not be buying this stock. I do not like this stock. It's just something that keeps coming up that I figured I'd take a quick review for you. Can let me know in the comment section below if you like this score. Do you own this company? Do you think I'm wrong? If there's anything I missed, you can also let the community know down there. So, yeah, stay cool. Stay awesome, guys. I look forward to chatting to you real soon.